So I've been using this art manager to manage my Blender projects and uh, I'm giving it out for free because I think you guys might find it very useful. It's a web-based tool. You can see we have different tabs here, references, renders, blends, copy pasta. Uh, the first one is the references and uh, this works like PRF just to manage your references. For example, uh, if I go to ArtStation, there is this uh, amazing art by Louis Lee. I uh, say I want to use this as references. I, I can just copy this image and paste it in here and uh, I can even move it around and scale it up. Basically like PRF, you can have this on a second monitor just for references and uh, when you like what you've done, you can even save the layout. I'm going to update this layout. If I, let's say, just refresh this page uh, so that everything is cleared, I can just go back to here and uh, open recents and I should have what I had before. Uh, you can save, update, and load uh, recent layouts. So that's the reference areas. And then the next section is renders. When you're working on a project, you might end up rendering a lot of different renders. You can see I have a lot of videos and it's not a big deal if you're just dealing with one folder where everything is. But when you have multiple folders, then you have to go in between different folders. And when it comes to previewing image sequences, there is no image player for that. So I created my own inside this player and let me show you how it works. Since most of my renders live here, I can just copy this URL, go to renders, and then settings and I paste the folder location here and then add it. Uh, you can see I already have it. You can remove some, you can add some. After you refresh, your renders will be listed here in a playlist and I can play one by one uh, just like that. Now, if they are MP4 files or video files, they'll play quite easily. Uh, but uh, if you have image sequences in that folder, you can go under here and go to sequences or you can even select the folder you want. So for example, I have a lot of image sequences there and uh, let me show you that. So E2023, you can see all these are image sequences and uh, there is no easy way for me to play back these image sequences, except when, when I'm using this. So uh, you can list this folder where those folders are in and uh, this page will be able to to fetch those image sequences. So I can go to one by one and start to play through them. Uh, you can see there is this, I have this, I have this, this. But uh, one thing you will notice is that uh, the playback is not really good because they're image sequences and image sequences don't really play very well in the browser. What I've done, I've added a converter inside the browser so that you can easily convert these image sequences to MP4. For example, this image sequence here, you can see how the playback is. So I can come here and there, there is a convert button that you can click and it will take a few seconds to convert because all this is working on your computer. It's not uploading anything. Everything lives inside your computer. So after conversion, I can have this playback and can just click on this. And then now I have a smoother playback for this. It plays back very easily because it's now converted to, to MP4. And if you want to get the, the converted video, you can go up here. There is a converted uh, button here. You can click on that and it will open the, the folder for the videos converted. And you can see that uh, this is here. Let's convert one more video. Let's see which one here. I, I unfortunately don't name my folders very well. So yeah, anyway, so I can come here. I can see the playback. I can just hit convert. And I think this is a bit longer. So it's taking a few seconds and it has converted. And you always see this tick for the converted versions. It's still playing back the image sequence. So I need to just hit playback and it will switch to the video sequence. And you can see how fast uh, that is. And again, I can just click on converted here uh, to open up the converted folder and you see my video is there. Let's go to the blends. So when you're working in Blender, you end up with a lot of uh, Blender projects. Uh, like you can see here, I have hundreds. The way you start, you go to the settings, you add your folder. You have to copy the folder path directly and paste it in here. And uh, you should see it down here. You can hit refresh just to make sure that everything has been loaded correctly. The next input here is the Blender executable path because you don't just want to list your blend files. You also want to be able to open them when you click on them. This path just makes sure that uh, the browser knows the location of Blender uh, so that it can open it when you click on the project file. Uh, let's say this JBL speaker. Uh, it should be able to locate the blend file, the, the executable and the project file itself. So after you set up the folders you want, uh, you can just hide these and uh, you can now uh, search, let's say Debris, because I know I have a Debris, a lot of Debris 
uh, stuff. So I ha let me get this uh, debris scatter. Take a look at that. It's been a while. I'll yeah, now we have that. We have the copy paste. In case you have links that you want to take a look at, uh, for example, when I do my gold level geometry nodes demos uh, this week, I usually just paste the links here. I create a list like this and paste the links here. So when I want to take a look at that, I just click on this and uh, it opens up that that link. We also have videos. I do a lot of video editing for, for my channel. In the same way, you would link new folders in Blender. Uh, you just paste the folder where you have videos and uh, you can see I have a list of different uh, folders here and uh, I can easily search for. So for example, if I have a tutorial and I need a video about Blender, I can just search for Blender and as long as I have uh, a video in that folder, I will uh, get a bunch of results here and I can play back the video. For example, uh, I made a, a video about the new fauna add-on. I can take a look at that. Editing a video about that, I can just click on open folder and it should open the location of uh, that that video and uh, I can just drag it into Premiere Pro or whatever video editor you're working with. But, but uh, to use this app, you need to install a program called ZAMP, which is used a lot in web development to turn your, your computer into a server so that you can run different applications that use databases and PHP. So on the ZAMP website, you can download for Windows, Linux, or Mac. Now you can just get this setup wizard, which is very, very simple to do. Select where you want to install. Just leave the defaults and just click next until uh, the setup is complete. So I'm just going to go to this folder here uh, because that's where our server is going to B. The great thing about installing ZAMP is that uh, because ZAMP basically turns your computer into a server, you'll be able to access this app or website on any computer that shares the same network where this ZAMP is installed. Uh, so when you go to the ZAMP folder, you're going to copy the project, uh, which is at manager here uh, from the website, Blender Everything, download it there, and uh, then paste the zip file in ZAMP under the HT docs, extract it so that uh, all the files are all here. These are the files necessary for the project to run. And I can see I'm using XAMPP to also build the blendereverything.com website. After extracting the app manager, now the next thing is to start the server so that the app is live and working. So to start your server, just go under search and search for XAMPP control panel. Uh, we only need a patch app, and uh, you should see that uh, it's running when it shows green here. And uh, now you can go to any browser and type in localhost, which basically says this computer, and uh, then the project, so which is at manager, at manager, and hit enter, and it should run. As long as you have the server running, this page will run. If you stop it, then you will get this error. So you need to make sure that Apache is running. And uh, so now if I refresh, you can see that is now working. Now, if you want the server to start automatically every time your computer switches on, uh, you can watch this video. It's just two minutes. It goes through the process of setting that up. Otherwise, you have to do it manually every time you start your computer. I'm going to leave the, the video as well in the description so that you can see how to set that up. Now, if you are a 3D artist, you have to really get into web development because it helps you build tools like this uh, that make your life easier and uh, 3D sometimes requires some basic programming. That's why you see a lot of Blender artists are also Adobe developers. This is a good way to get into web development and programming. And in fact, if you want to add more features to the app, all you have to do is install Visual Studio. It now comes with an AI to do the coding for you. And in case you want to add features to the app manager, let me first close it out here. Uh, close folder. I just go to where you have htdocs at manager and drag it into into visual studio and ask chat gpt glow or whatever about the website whether it is safe how you can alter it what changes you can make and uh, what functions you can make and it will do that for you anyway that's it thanks for watching see you in the next one